Our next speaker is raising capital expert Brad Blazer. Brad has raised over $2 billion in capital, shared the stage with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. He has three best selling books, Wings of an Eagle. He has a number two rated podcast for Yahoo Finance. And he's going to talk about the secrets of how to raise private money from high net worth investors and um, how to create wealth through doing that so you can fund your real estate project, business, that special project. So we're so glad to have Brad Blazer on here. I want to welcome Brad on the High Point Set Summit. How you doing, Brad? Good. Hey, Jason. How are you today? Great. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. I'll let you take it away. We're going to be in for a great treat and talk about how to raise money from high net worth individuals. So take it away, Brad. Great. Well, thank you so much for Jason said. My primary skill is knowing how to raise money. Um, and lots of it. And in real estate, as most of you know, if you're in it, or you're finding out if you're trying to get in it, you need money to make money. And what I'd like all of you to do that are not yet real estate investors, that are just getting started, have a goal, have a dream of someday owning some property, is to just close your eyes for a minute. Just close your eyes and really just look at yourself introvertly and imagine what a perfect life would look like. A life of abundance, a life of wealth, a life of having multiple streams of income so that you weren't dependent on one primary source like a job. Maybe you've got a nice car in the driveway that you've always dreamt about like a Bentley or a Jaguar or a sports car. You're living in a much nicer, bigger home. You're enjoying great vacations, staying at the Ritz-Carlton, or maybe enjoying them on private yachts. Let that sink in for a moment. Imagine what life could be. Now open your eyes. I want to ask you a question. You see, I believe a good coach will do three things for a person. Number one, they will motivate and inspire you. Number two, a good coach will get you to do things tomorrow that you're not capable of doing today. And the very last and the most important is a good coach or a good mentor will have those tough, difficult conversations with you, asking you perhaps questions that you don't want to answer or aren't comfortable answering, but that's where the big change and the transformation comes in. And the reason a lot of people folks are not where they would like to be is because they're stuck. They're not taking action. They're not moving forward because of a false belief, a limiting belief, a myth. And that myth is I need money to invest in real estate and do it successfully. Part of that is true. Yes, you do need money. As an example, if you're going to go out and purchase a small rental property and go in and do some renovation and rehab, you're going to need money to do that. If you're going to invest in a, in a multifamily property, go out and buy a 40 or a 60 unit property, it's going to cost a lot of money. And then there's going to be, of course, the, uh, the rehab or the renovation if you're getting into value add. Most people never even take the first step. And the reason they do not do that is because they don't have the money. And what I'm here to tell you today, folks, is all the money you need, all of it, is simply in the pocket of somebody else. And what you have to learn is a skill, a skill that can be taught by somebody that knows how to get money, and more importantly, a skill that you can learn, just like playing the piano, just like riding a bike, you see. Once you understand how to get money, it's game over. Your life can change. You can start doing those big things. You can start accomplishing those big dreams. You can start investing in those properties by bringing in investment partners. And that's how I was able at the age of 23 to build an oil company, raising millions of dollars a month with drilling programs all around the country. That's how today I invest in multifamily. That's how today I teach other people all over the world how to do this, how to put together their collateral, their investor kit, their PowerPoint, their offering memorandum, things like that that you need in order to make 
a good perception in order to move the conversation forward. Now, yesterday, I largely talked about something called the trust sequence, which were basically six steps that we go through in building trust, in building a relationship with a prospective investor. Because obviously nobody's going to invest with you or invest alongside you until there's trust and you've developed a relationship, right? Y'all with me there? Nobody's going to give you fifty, dollars $100,000 unless they trust you, unless they believe that you're going to be a good fiduciary, take care of their money, not going to invest it unwisely, going to do the things you said you were going to do. All of those things are, are very, very important. But what I want to talk about today is something that I refer to as the four-step sales blueprint and really unpack this and explain why this works. Because this is what I used and this is what I've trained other people to use to literally raise tens of millions of dollars. You see, what Jason said earlier is I'm also known as the $2 billion guy, the individual that successfully has raised over $2 billion over the course of my career, primarily for real estate, for deals that I've been involved with, but also for other much larger sponsors, either as a co-GP or working alongside them, whether it's in multifamily or office or self-storage. And I've closed some big mega million dollar deals, 9 million, 11 million, seven and a half million. Now, I wasn't always known as the $2 billion guy. You see, there were periods in my life when like many people, I was at a low where I was unemployed right? I was scrambling to pay rent. But I looked at myself one day and I said, what is my primary hard skill? What am I really, really good at? And what I came to realize is I was really good at raising money because I had done it when I was in college working for two oil companies, getting on the phone, calling out to high net worth accredited investors, explaining who we were, what we did, and then obviously moving them to the point where they were writing a check or wiring proceeds or investing alongside us in our various projects. And today I have the pleasure of coaching and consulting people through Capital School, which is a program that we've put together to teach them how to attract investors, to teach them what they need in the way of an offering memorandum, collateral material to close investors, and then most importantly, how to use that money to invest in things that are gonna create generational wealth, primarily real estate. Now it all starts with a conversation. You can't get an investor without a conversation, right? And it doesn't really matter whether this investor is a code call or you're calling somebody off of a high net worth accredited investor list, it doesn't really matter whether you source this individual through your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, which many people are doing today with some of the new rules and regulations like Reg A or like a 506C offering or a Reg CF through one of the crowdfunding platforms. There's a number of securities regulations that allow you to do these things. But again, you got to make sure you know what you're doing. But it all starts with that first conversation, that first call. And even if it's a warm relationship where somebody is referred to you by an existing investor, the best advice that I can give to you is slow it down. You see, I can't tell you how many dozens of people I've talked to over the last few years that have tried to raise money. They've hired people trying to raise money and they failed miserably. And one of the reasons that they have failed miserably is that they're trying to push the process too quickly. They're having conversations with that prospective investor too prematurely before there's ever trust, before there's ever a relationship even developed. And so what I'd like everybody to really think about is four steps. Okay, write it down, four steps. The first two steps, you're not selling. You're not having a conversation about the investment at all. The last two steps is where you present the opportunity and close and hopefully bring a new partner and a new relationship into your organization. So on the four-step sales blueprint, which all of you, of course, got a link to the other day, and I can share that again, 
it's to understand that on the first call or the first Zoom or the first meeting, you want to just disarm the person. You want to let them know that you're really here just to add value, to educate, to see if they have an interest in what it is you're doing, to tempt them, to pique their interest. Because ultimately, as an entrepreneur, as somebody doing real estate, you've got to uncover what that little piece of bait is that you've got to put on that hook to get that person to move forward and ultimately invest. Because as a real estate entrepreneur and as an investor, folks, I'm not fishing for bluegills. I'm looking for blue marlins. I'm looking for people that can write checks for $100,000, $200,000. And there's a big difference. It takes a lot of small investors investing $10,000, $25,000 to raise $2 million to buy a large multifamily property. But it doesn't take nearly as many when you're talking to blue marlins that are going to give you $100,000, $250,000. The way you start off the conversation is very, very important. But what you have to understand is human nature. You also have to understand psychology because most of the time you're gonna get a smoke screen. You're gonna have somebody tell you I'm not interested. And that's human nature. It's not that they are not interested. It's because they do not yet know you. There's no trust. There's no relationship. And so if you go into a conversation with somebody as a prospective investor, understanding this psychological element, you're then able to respond appropriately to move that process forward. As an example, let's say I had bought a high net worth accredited investor list, just a list of names, addresses, emails, telephone numbers of people that are supposed to be accredited. And I'm going down my list. And as an example, I was calling Richard today. Hey, Richard, Brad Blazer calling from Five Star Capital. We're a private equity firm located in Houston, Texas. And I just wanted to call you today to see if you have an interest in alternative investments and more importantly, investments that have substantial tax benefits. Nine out of 10 times, he's gonna say, I'm not interested. And he's gonna say that for the same reason that when I'm in a department store looking to buy a suit or a shirt or a tie and the clerk comes up to me and he says, hi, how are you doing today? Can I be of service to you? I say, no, not right now, just looking. <laughs> Nine out of 10 times, right? But eventually I go back to that clerk or that clerk reapproaches me in a few minutes and he's showing me around the store and ultimately I walk out with what I'm looking for. But if you understand the psychology, when that person says, I'm not interested, you very quickly say, you know, I understand, but before I let you go, let me just ask you a quick question. Are you not interested because perhaps you've invested in something like this in the past and it simply didn't work out the way you expected it to? You're gonna get an answer. Yes or no. And then you're going to come right back with another question. Well, let me ask you, have you invested in real estate before? Is this something that you're actively doing now? You're going to get another answer. And as long as you continue to ask questions, what you'll find is that in many cases, you'll be on the phone for 20 or 30 minutes. It's a beautiful thing. You're taking somebody from a not interested to now building trust and building a relationship. And all along, you're constantly disarming them saying, you know, I just want to remind you again that I'm not calling today to sell you or offer anything. I just wanted to find out if this is something you have an interest in. And if it is, I'd like to just stay in touch and send you some information on our company, who we are, what we do. At the end of the call, you thank them for their time. And what I like to do is send out what I call a corporate piece. It's a teaser. It's usually a one pager front and back, or it's a little what I call a coffee table. A brochure that has pictures of who we are, our team, properties, etc. has content in there about the tax benefits of why it makes sense to invest in multifamily, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I make a little note in my CRM notes what we talked about, what he responded to, questions, answers, so that it refreshes my memory when I call him back in about another week or two weeks. Now, typically about eight to 10 days later, I want to call this person back. And what I want to do on this second conversation, again, is disarm, build trust, build a relationship. So the second call, hey, Richard, Brad Blazer calling from Five Star Capital. How's the weather out there? Great. And I always like to spend about three to five minutes to re-engage, 
just to build that relationship. Ask them what they've been doing, how the family is, if they've had anything exciting happen. But I'm going to eventually transition back to the reason of the call. You know, I just wanted to check in with you and make sure that you receive the information that I have sent. Nine out of times, they're going to say yes. But again, you have to understand human nature and psychology. Because invariably, in many cases, they're going to say yes, but I have not had a chance to look at it yet, right? Most salespeople at that point would say, great, let me give you a couple of days and call you back later in the week. And you hang up the phone. The second you do that, their interest and the opportunity to bring them in as a partner has dropped considerably, right? Because now they kind of go into that, what I call that black hole, right? The, this prudent and the smart thing to do, and what I train my team to do is say, you know, I certainly can understand we're both busy professionals. If you have it somewhere in your office or you can pull it up on your computer, there's a couple of real key things I'd like to bring to your attention today. That's the reason I called. I'll wait. And then you wait. They'll come back on the phone or they'll come back on the Zoom in a minute or two. Great. And then what you do is you open up what you sent them in front of you. You open up or ask them to open up what you sent them in front of them. Maybe it's on a computer. And all you want to do is just bring their attention to two or three things. The tax benefits. Why multifamily? Tell them a little bit about your company. Okay. Again, you're building trust. You're building a relationship. And at the end of the call, this is the most important part of this entire process. If you take nothing away today other than this one little secret, this entire training, this entire summit has been worth its weight in gold. What I always say at the end is, Rich, you know, it's been great getting to know you over the last couple of calls, but I want to let you know that I may never have the opportunity to actually offer you an investment. And the reason is we like to give our existing investors the first right of refusal on most of our ensuing programs. And the majority of time they fill up very quickly because we're very good at doing what we do. But in the event I have an opening at some point in the future, do I have your permission to get back in touch? You see, when they say yes, they have opened the door to the opportunity now of investing with you. But the important part of that psychologically is what we call a takeaway sale. You see, most salespeople are trying to sell, right? They're trying to push product. They're trying to pitch. What you've just done is you've taken the opportunity off the table and given him the impression that he may not ever get the chance to invest with you and it's psychologically proven that people desire what they perceive they cannot get, okay? People perceive that people want what they perceive they cannot get. Well, if you're like building trust in a relationship, what I do after that second call is I send an email and I follow up by sending him now something of interest that is relevant to what we've been discussing. And this is what we call a non-linear touch. It's not a phone call. It's not a Zoom. It's not a meeting. It's just, you know, hey, I thought this might be of interest to you, Richard. I saw this the other day in Barron's or the Wall Street Journal or somewhere. I thought that, you know, you benefit from it. Now, eight to 10 days later, I'm going to call him back because now I'd like to talk to him about the opportunity, the multifamily project or the deal I'm working on. So at this time, I call him back. Hey, Richard, Brad Blazer here again, Five Star Capital. You know, we spoke about a week and a half ago, and I told you I was going to add you to my list, which I did. It just so happens we've got a really great project we're working on down in Naples, Florida. It's a 142-unit property about two blocks from the beach. And what I'm doing today is I'm just going down my list, name by name. And so I came up to yours. And if you have a couple of minutes, I'd love to tell you what we're doing. Do you have some time? Great. And then, folks, that's when you're going into the deal. See now? I didn't talk deal on the first call. I didn't talk deal on the second call. I got his permission. And now on the third conversation, three weeks later, after I've built trust and I've built a relationship with this person, now trust me, I'm now talking about the deal in Naples, Florida, going into all the specifics, where it is, why we like it, how we're going to add value, how much we're raising, the projected returns, the cash on cash, all of those things. I'm getting him excited. I'm getting him in his mind 
to see him owning a piece of this property. And at the end of that conversation, I'm going to just ask a simple question. Can I send you the investor package? If he says yes, I send him the package. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. And I work with hundreds of real estate entrepreneurs and investors all across the country. Many of them are printing and sending a hard kit in a nice, beautiful folder. It's an investor kit that's got a beautiful PowerPoint and the offering memorandum and the subscription paperwork. And you know, it's a nice kit, makes a really beautiful presentation. Spend money on your materials because marketing and branding is so very important. You want the person to open up that envelope and go, wow, these people really know what they're doing. This is beautiful. Same thing with the website, spend money there too. But when you send somebody information electronically, as many people are doing, invest a little bit of money to look at some of these platforms that allow you to do this in a data room, like Juniper Square, which is a great company, or Appfolio, or CrowdStreet. All of these are what I call platforms that allow you to create a virtual data room that somebody can enter. And now look at your offering circular, look at your PowerPoint, maybe look at a video. And when they're at a point where they're ready to invest, many of these platforms allow them to move forward and invest electronically by completing the subscription paperwork using DocuSign. So you never have to be sending stuff back and forth in the mail. And it's a process where you can put basically steps along the way so that as they move through, there are different boxes to check to ensure that when you get a completed subscription document, they haven't forgotten to check a box where you have to go back to them or you have to call them on the phone or do something. That's what we use, okay? We use Juniper Square, it's a great tool. So now you're on the third call, you send them the information. About eight to 10 days later, you wanna call them back. And this is where you're gonna go through the material. You're gonna answer questions. You're gonna hopefully overcome any objections or any concerns. And this is at the end where you're just gonna ask them, do you want to invest? Now, when you ask them, do you want to invest? I personally believe there's a right way and there's a wrong way, right? You never want to say, is this something you want to invest in? That's a yes or no question. You never want to say, how much of this do you want? Because they could say, you know, I'm not interested. I want to think about it. What I learned to do a long time ago still works. Most deals that I've invested in or that we've put together have units or shares or a minimum investment, you know, 50,000, 100,000, et cetera. And so when I've done a pretty good job of answering questions, I want to bring closure, okay, to that conversation. Closure is the process of bringing two things together. And you have to create what I call a little positive tension. I won't say it gets uncomfortable for either person, but the other person knows pretty soon you're going to ask them to get out the checkbook. And what I've done and what works really, really well, folks, is to use a little bit of psychology again. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. Give the person the opportunity to say no. And nine out of 10 times, they won't. Let me say that again, very important. Just like what I said before, right? About the psychology of the takeaway and saying on the second call, Richard, I may never have the chance to offer you an opportunity to invest with us because we always give our existing investors the right of first refusal to invest on ensuing programs. This part, on the fourth call, which is the close, is again, oh, 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 so very important. The way I ask people if they want to invest is I say, Richard, let me ask you a question. How much of this property would you like to invest in? Would you like one unit? Would you like two units? Would you like to take three units? Or do you prefer no units? And then I just bite my tongue. Now, it might seem like eternity, but the person's thinking. And usually what happens is they come back and they say, tell me again, how much two units in your program cost? Or they'll come back and they'll say, tell me again, how much a unit in your program cost? And at that point you say, go get your checkbook. Let's fill out the paperwork, Richard, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Okay, that's how you close. And a lot of times you have to have closing techniques. You have to have one-liners. You have to have a little script of things to say if you're just getting started in this process as a newbie, learning how to raise capital. But I had a team of people when I had my oil company that were on the phone raising millions of dollars a month using this exact four-step sales blueprint. 
I had an individual that came to work for me that I talked about yesterday, Jack, who was a train wreck that raised $25 million for my business in a year, made a quarter of a million dollars in commission using this very framework, this four-step sales blueprint. And the reason that this blueprint works is it follows the trust sequence that I talked about yesterday, right? Perception, number one, they're gonna make a perception of you at that first meeting. Number two, temptation. You gotta find out what's gonna tempt them, right? Number three, confirmation, right? They're checking you out. Number four, validation in their mind. They've checked out your LinkedIn. They've checked out your website. They validated that you're an honest, trustworthy person. That trust sequence ties up to the four-step sales blueprint. And that's what makes this process work so very nicely. That's what allows you to raise money as an investor. Now, I want to dispel a couple of myths here today that I get very, very frequently from a lot of people. Number one myth is, Brad, I need prior performance. I need a track record. I need to have done this in order for me to go out and raise money. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Big time investors really don't care as much about your performance or your track record as they do about the deal. If it's a great deal and you've done your underwriting and the numbers make sense, you will attract capital because money always flows to great opportunities. And if you can show that investor that you've got a team around you of knowledgeable people, as an example, an attorney that you're working with, an accountant that you're working with, right? And you've got a little bit of depth in your organization. You're going to show them that, you know, even though you haven't acquired a property before, you have a power team of people that are mentoring you and they're going to help you be successful. Nine out of 10 times, you'll win them over. Now, once you obviously get some success, it becomes much, much easier. But don't let the fact that you haven't done this be a precursor because, you know, how could I, 23 years old, someone that dropped out of college, never drilled an oil well, go on to build a sizable oil company raising millions of dollars a month and convince those early stage investors to invest alongside me. The second thing that I will tell you is do not go out and do these stupid, big, expensive dinners just because everybody else is. I can't tell you how many literally hundreds of people I've consulted with that are spending thousands of dollars buying investor leads, sending them out, doing big steak dinners or big fancy dinners at nice restaurants, bringing a group of people in, doing a PowerPoint, trying to raise money. What you end up getting are plate liquors. You get a lot of people that show up that are there for the free dinner. Yes, you will raise some money, but you're not gonna raise nearly as much as if you do something completely different. You see the big investors, the people that have three, five, ten million dollars that you're hunting for, the blue marlins, very rarely do they go to those types of dinners. Very rarely do they go to those types of events. And there's a reason. They don't need the meal, they don't need the free wine, like the plate liquors. But what they do get attracted to and what they will attend are what I call lifestyle events. And I've got a whole company, we've got a website, www.bbsignatures.com, that is a lifestyle event company where we invite high net worth accredited investors to get behind the wheel of supercars. Imagine inviting someone that's worth a couple million. Hey, we're putting a small group together, we're gonna go drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis tomorrow. You wanna join us? Who's gonna say no to that? Or we're going to a polo tournament next weekend. We're going to go watch some polo. You want to come out and stop some chuckers and have some champagne? Again, who's going to say no to that? We're putting together a golf outing. These are what I call lifestyle events. These are the things that big time successful people will come to. And at these events, you really don't want to sell. You want to network. You want to get to know everybody that's there. Shake hands, make connections, introduce one person to another person. Hey, Richard, do you know Jason? Oh, Jason does this. Jason, I want to introduce you to Richard. This is what Richard does. And then after a few minutes, walk away. Let them talk. Go meet someone else. Towards the middle, you want to introduce yourself and give no more than a 10 to 15 minute quick presentation on who you are and why you brought the group together. And then off in the corner on a table, have your literature, have some booklets, 
have some materials, ask people to take that with them when they leave. But then the most important part is the follow-up that begins immediately after the event. You see, the problem most people have is they're good at getting in front of people, but they stink at the follow-up. Science has proven, folks, that it sometimes takes seven to 15 touches to get somebody to say yes. The problem is most people give up after three or four, right? You call someone, they say, you know, hey, I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. You call them back a couple of days later, you miss them, you leave a voicemail, you don't hear from them, you send an email. You've made numerous attempts. And after the third or fourth, 85% of the people that try to raise money just give up. They just make the assumption the person's not interested. Sometimes it takes seven to 15 touches to literally move a person through that process. And that's why it's so important to understand this cadence of not linear and nonlinear touches along the way. You see, now, I wanna talk a little bit about what we're doing for those of you that are interested in learning how to raise money and really learning how to raise money in a big way. I started something that we call Capital School. And we started Capital School because in order to raise money, you need certain things. You just can't go out and start raising money without having an investor package. The problem is that for most people going to an attorney and asking them to write you a full-blown offering memorandum, at a minimum, you're looking at 25, 30,000, all the way up to 50 to 75, depending on the quality of the firm, how much the attorney charges an hour, et cetera. Because they have to write your private placement memorandum, the offering circular that you're gonna to give to people. If you're gonna have a fund or you're gonna raise money on a single asset, most people don't have that kind of money. But here's what I'm going to tell you. That lawyer is not sitting down writing your offering memorandum like someone sits down and writes a book. It's a template. And all they're going to do is they're going to say, Maria, I need to have the address that we need to put in there for you. Do you have a logo? Can you create some content that we can plug in there for you that explains what you're going to do with the money when you get it? What is the sharing arrangement on the back end in terms of the split between you and the investors. And they're just plugging this in until they ultimately get a completed document and they send you a big fat bill. My thought is if I gave you the same template that they use and told you and showed you and held your hand and showed you how to do this to create your own and in that process, save you tens of thousands of dollars, are you much better off? Of course you are. And what I will tell you is the template that we prepare and deliver to our students is done by one of the top securities law firms in the country, a firm that has multiple offices with hundreds of partners called Kaplan, Vogler, Cunningham. We work with a gentleman there by the name of Daryl Steinhaus. And so you can be rest assured that you're getting a very robust SEC vetted approved offering circular with all the disclaimers, all of the things that need to be in there. The second thing is we teach you how to put together your PowerPoint, show you what needs to be in there. We even say, send it to us. We'll take a look at it. We'll give you some constructive feedback. Same thing with your investment teaser, your website. We're here to hold your hand each step of the way from being a newbie or being somebody that's already raising money that wants to scale and go to the next level. Maybe you're raising money from high net worth individuals. You want to learn how to get into family offices. You teach that. Maybe you're raising money from investors and you want to get on some crowdfunding platforms, put your deals up on like Realty Mogul, some of these big crowdfunding platforms like Fundrise, teach you how to do that too. All of these things related to raising money are taught in capital school. And throughout capital school, we have weekly live training on Thursdays. I bring on guest speakers to introduce new and creative ways of raising capital. Last week, we had uh, Matt Sullivan from Quantum talk about how you can pull the equity out of your house. It's not a loan. There's no debt. There are no interest payments. Okay. And by pulling that equity out of your home, you can now use it to invest in things like rental property or other types of investments to basically use that untapped equity. Imagine getting access to $100,000, $200,000 of money to invest where you never have to make a payment. Okay, it's not debt, 
and you can stay in the house 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It's a fantastic tool that most people are not familiar with. These types of things are the secrets that we share because success does leave clues. The greatest, quickest way to become successful is to learn from other people that have done or are where you want to be. So if you're interested in capital school, DM me, put a little note to me in the chat. We'll make sure you get the information. We'll get on a strategy call with you. Find out if it makes sense for you to take a closer look. I'm only looking for some serious entrepreneurs that want to learn how to raise money, invest in real estate, and do it successfully. The second thing that I'd like to talk about, I'm going to make everybody a special offer today, is I believe that everybody has another gear. What I mean by that is as we go through life, we tend to plateau. We, we tend to reach a level and we stay there. And usually we stay there because we as people are programmed to default and retreat to a place of comfort because our brains are wired that way. Psychologists have studied this. It's called the primitive mind, the reptilian brain, which is designed basically to keep us out of harm's way. And what I've learned through my podcast, interviewing some of the most successful entrepreneurs that have created wonderful companies that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, is that they were able to tap into themselves and flip a switch. And largely, the flipping of that switch is activated either by an external force or by exposure to something, or by being around successful people. There's a wonderful book. Many of you perhaps have actually read this book, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And what Stephen Covey talks about is the whole person theory, which means that we as people are made up basically of four things. Okay? You've got a body, you've got a spirit, you've got a heart, and you've got a mind. And each of these four things represents something uniquely different. Your heart is what I call your prey drive. That's your beast mode, right? That's basically your passion to do something. That's what drives you, okay? Your spirit basically, of course, is your faith. That's largely your confidence. It's where those things come from. Then, of course, you've got your body. That's your skill. Imagine a person like a Michael Jordan or a Tiger Woods, man, they're great. They're skilled. And then, of course, you have your mind. That's knowledge. The problem is you have to feed all of these things to be successful. Successful people understand this. But most people have not flipped the switch. Most people are not at a level that they potentially could be at because they have not yet surrounded themselves with successful people worked with a mentor, hired a coach. And it's very sad to me when I see most people acquiesce and give up on life and settle where they are when they can go on to do much, much bigger, greater things. So I want to share my screen and talk about something that we are doing here in a couple of weeks called Capital Con, which is going to become the largest preeminent wealth building conference in the country, bringing together some of the biggest thought leaders in business and in financial literacy, okay? Imagine being at an event and learning from Kevin Harrington, one of the sharks, okay? Literally, he's going to be there. He's a speaker right there. You see his picture. Kevin Harrington, Shark Tank, inventor of the infomercial, one of our keynote speakers at Capital Con, April 16th and 17th. Sharon Lecter, the woman in the middle, the co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad that she co-wrote with Robert Kiyosaki. She personally has sold over 42 million books. She's the only woman on the entire planet that has ever received the highest award given out by Napoleon Hill's foundation. And what she did is she worked with the Napoleon Hill Foundation to annotate a book that Napoleon Hill wrote that was never published called Outwitting the Devil. She's the person responsible for Outwitting the Devil. Great book. I highly recommend y'all read that. John Shin, who's a multimillionaire with WFG and the founder of Oxianta Financial, right there with Ed Milet, dude. A lot of people don't know John because he's not as flamboyant as Ed Milet, but he's a stud. Multi-million dollar, multiple homes. He's going to be there. But what's key about John Shin 
is he approached Napoleon Hill's foundation and he said, you know, Think and Grow Rich is such a wonderful, great book. Let's make it a movie. And so he is the executive producer, folks, of a movie called Think and Grow Rich, starring people like Barbara Corcoran, Grant Cardone, Tim Story, for those of you that know the World Shaker, who's the personal coach to 300 of the highest paid celebrities in Hollywood, Warren Moon, Joel Brown, Joe Stobel, et cetera. He's gonna be there as the executive producer to have a special preview of Think and Grow Rich. Now, I wanna offer this to anybody that's gonna take action on this in the next 24 hours. This is a limited time opportunity to come to a live event. As you see down here, we have tickets, okay? You have basically four different levels of tickets. VIP gets you in the door. Premier gets you in the door, gives you some networking, gives you some lunch with the speakers all the way up to platinum, which is the red carpet. If you wanna surround yourself with big time thought leaders and learn from the best, what I will do is upgrade you to the next level. What I mean by that is if you sign up today or in the next 24 hours and buy a VIP seat at CapitalCon, you'll come in as a premier, okay? I'll give you 200 bucks. We're gonna bump you right up to the next highest ticket. If you buy a premier at 497, you're gonna come in through the door as a diamond. You see how this works? And if you wanna invest a little bit more money and spend $800 to buy the diamond, you're gonna get a $4,500 package where you're personally now sitting down in a mastermind with all of these people in the same room. Okay, you're gonna have a special platinum lunch, special party where you're physically getting to sit down and interact one-on-one -on -one with some of these great thought leaders. Take advantage of that, folks, because success does leave clues. And I brought together literally some of the best people in financial literacy, in investing in real estate, in raising money from other people. Okay, for example, Robert Martinez owns Rockstar Capital here in Houston, Texas. He's got 4,400 units in multifamily in a portfolio close to $500 million, all raised through investor capital. He's going to be there. Dave Seymour, some of you that are on the East Coast, like Jason in Boston might know Dave. He was the host and the star of the reality a &E TV show, Flipping Boston, buying houses, rehabbing them, selling them for profit. Dave Seymour in the house. So take me up on this offer, folks. Like I said, it's good for the next 24 hours because you're here at the High Performance Success Summit. Get in the room learn, get the knowledge, flip the switch, and then go back home and implement the strategy and the plan with the tools that you will be taught. With that, I'll end and open it up, Jason, for any questions that anybody has in Q&A about raising money, about capital school, or about more importantly, how you can learn how to use OPM to basically take your real estate business and really take it to the next level. Do you have any questions, Brad, right now? Uh, Capital Con is going to be a great event. Uh, Capital School is great. I've coached with Brad, and Brad's already made a difference to my business, and he's worked with me as well. So I can personally say Brad is awesome. You should definitely take advantage of that. Let's see if anyone has anything. In what I do is I'm going to go ahead and put the link uh, for Capital Con in the chat so that anybody that does have an interest that would like to click on that, learn about Capital Con, look at the website that we've created for it and perhaps make a decision, uh, can actually take this link and actually go there. Uh, this is the link. If you click on it right there in chat, it'll take you right to the Capital Con website. And like I said, folks, there is magic in attending a live event. It's number one, the energy it's the inspiration. It's also the connections that you're gonna make while you're there through networking. You know, we're talking to companies like NewView that are custodians to have a table and be there as a sponsor in the room because we're gonna be bringing investors into this that are looking for ways to create horizontal streams of income, looking to make connections, looking to do big time things. By being in an environment like this, it's not just the people on stage. It might be the person sitting right next to you or the person that's sitting in front of you because during the breaks, you connect with people and you find a support team that are gonna then help you take your business 
take whatever it is you're doing to the next level. I always explain to people that are looking at an opportunity like CapitalCon, yeah, it costs a little bit of money, right? You got to pay for the ticket, you got to drive or you got to fly to get there, maybe spend a night in a hotel. But what's the cost of not attending? Could cost you millions of dollars by not being there. Could literally cost you hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars by not being in that room. Because one idea, one thing that you pick up on, whether it's from Kevin Harrington or from Sharon Lecter, who co-wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, probably one of the most famous books on creating wealth, or learning from someone like Sergio Bruna, right, who is the global ambassador for General Motors, has done over 600 commercials, interviewed by Larry King. One idea backed with some action can make you a huge success. Think about that. You go home with one idea that someone gave you. You put some effort and action. That becomes a business, and that business grows, and you become wealthy and create generational wealth. So like I'm saying, folks, the decision is yours. This is a limited time offer to get in the room and learn and be around big time real estate people, big time capital people, people that are worth literally hundreds of millions of dollars that are there to teach you what it is they've done. That's what they're there for, to teach you how I did this. This is what I do today. This is how I'm building my business. This is how I'm scaling. This is how I'm taking things to the next level. Because again, success does leave clues. People that are at that level aren't there because $297 is going to make a change in their lives. They're there because what they enjoy doing is making other people successful and seeing the transformation that takes place as other people implement things they've learned and then take their lives to the next level. So get in the room. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. My personal email, if you want to send an email to me, is info, I-N-F-O, at bradblazer.com. I'm putting it here basically in the chat. That's our email address, info at bradblazer.com. If you're interested in any of our other coaching services on build a beast, creating the right mindset, activating what I call prey drive so that you start operating at a higher gear Typically, most people that are enrolled in our program see a 35 to a 60% lift in their sales, revenues, and profits over a six to nine month cycle just by working with us because we're able to activate and unlock this thing within them where they start working with more intensity. They start living life on the offense with a plan rather than living life defensively, just showing up every day. If those types of things resonate with you and you wanna see greater success, just send an email to us and we'll get on a quick one-on-one -on -one strategy call. And Steve will definitely reach out to you as it relates to capital school to make sure that you get the information that you need as well. With that, I'm going to wrap up. If we have a few more minutes, Jason, do you have any questions or anything because you and I have worked together that you would like to touch upon as well? Uh, no, I mean, with the experience working with you, Brad, it's been great. I mean, it's helped us with the holiday the summits, but uh, working on coming out of my own coaching program and I'll be releasing my ebook, uh, How to Become a Big Star in Event Planning, which will be released shortly. And so it's been a great experience as well, work with you, Brad. So great. Well, everybody yeah. take care. You know, be well, be safe. And just remember that if you're not where you are in life today, you don't have to stay where you are. You see, life basically is all about the decisions we make. It's about our habits. It's about our beliefs because our beliefs define our reality. And beliefs are reinforced by our habits. If you instill new habits into your daily routine, there's only one thing that can happen. You will become more successful. You will start seeing success, but you have to continue with that habit routinely. It's like putting one step in front of the other, right? It's like running a marathon. Small things compounded over time will ultimately allow you to attain the goal and reach the level of success that you're wanting to get to. There was a, uh, is that a question? I thought there was maybe a chat. No, that was a question from the last speaker that okay, she answered. Gotcha. So now there's no new questions in the chat or on the Q&A. So again, I just want to thank Brad Blaze for coming on and sharing some great wisdom on how to connect with high net worth individuals 
you want to reach out to Brad for Capital School or Build a Beast or his upcoming conference, Capital Con, uh, taking place April 16th and 17th. So you want to reach out to Brad for that. Thank you again, Brad, so much. Thank you so much again, Jason. It's great to be here today. All right. Well, thank you again.